After my experiences touring six of the top wine regions throughout Australia, I decided that it was time for me to return to the United States to do what every filmmaker would do and convert, move to Los Angeles, get a loft, renovate it, and start work again. Now, when my ass hit that chair, I got upset. I realized that I missed out on an adventure that I had as an idea ever since I began Wine Ramp. I didn't even make it to one of the top wine regions out west that I always wanted to go to since I was doing my masters there. These things were simply unacceptable in my eyes. So I did what I had to do. I went back to my home base in Austin. I went back to where wine really took off for me, to Adelaide, South Australia. I always love the feeling driving north of Adelaide into the South Australian wine regions. At one point I drove there every day working in the Barossa Valley, but one area I didn't get to make it to that often was Clare. Clare is about an hour northwest of the Barossa Valley and it makes one of my favorite wines in the world, which is a dry white wine called Riesling. Go on searching. It's one that they do so differently here in such a dry style. The Watervale subregion makes the perfect example. And I'm coming in to check out Jim Berry Wines, which is a family winery that has a third generation winemaker who's their son by the name of Tom Berry. I actually studied with Tom for roughly about a year at Wake Campus in Uni Adelaide, but we never crossed paths. So today I'm gonna catch up with him. And he just got the Young Winemaker of the Year Award from Gourmet Traveler. And so I'm sure he's gonna be showing me a good time, some good wines, and I know he's getting married in a month. So I'll see what kind of trouble I can get up to with him before that. Hello there. Hey, how are you? Nice yeah, to meet yeah, you, Yeah, you too, you too. All right, well, uh, let's go in and we'll, we'll taste a few wines. Sweet, I'm excited to see the place. Yeah, nice. so this is our 2013 Lodge Hill Riesling. It's got, yeah, that beautiful acid and, and fruit that, that you get out of the, uh, the Clare Valley Riesling. Yeah. We'll head out the back, yeah. have a look at the winery and see where it's all made. Yeah, show me where it's made. I think being family owned is a, is a huge, huge part of um, our success. There's, there's, we're not driven by shareholders and, and, and the direction that we've wanted to take has been extremely clear. To make the best Riesings and the best Reds out of Clare, Jim Barry Wines is, is a label and, and a winery that people see and, and associate with quality. I'm really trying to trying to show raising on an international level and, and, and get people thinking about dry raising and that's the thing about Claire, the, the dry raisings that we make it and I often misunderstood. Um, people pick up a bottle of Riesling and they think it's sweet and it's just such a such a misconception really like they're just yeah, beautiful dry wines. You got shovels for a reason. Yeah I know, let's dig some holes I reckon. I like we'll, let's dirt. have a look at some uh, some soil. Alright, sounds good. Where are we digging it right there? Alright. So, all right, what are we looking at? Basically, so stuff? this is a really good, yeah. So we've got, basically, we've got this chocolate, chocolate or brown lime over some over a, a layer of limestone, and then we've got this this fractured rock. So the, the, that's right. The roots can find their way through that. Through that, they'll actually penetrate that. Yeah, yeah, they can get that. They don't go around it. They actually go down. Where it's fractured, they'll get it. They won't actually be able to dig dig down through them though. Now, what I learned digging a hole in a Clare Valley vineyard was that. The minerality that one person can taste in a dry mineral white wine like Clare Valley Riesling isn't necessarily the minerals and the dirt that you find in the vineyard, yet it's actually a combination of unique factors that contribute to the final flavor profile of your wine. So that can be the aspect of the vineyard, the length of the growing season, the micro macro climate in the area, or yes, also the unique patch of dirt that that vineyard grows on and the nutrients and the minerals within it. It pays off to actually get in the, get in the hole and dig a hole. <laughs> oh, it's just, I think it's just great to see the profile of the rock and the limestone and the, and the loam and, and see what those, see what the vines are really dealing with. Well, we're in a Hunter Valley, you got Sprokenwood Winery. Mm. Simon and I, we actually tasted the soil. Did you? Yeah. yeah, how'd you go? Kind of eating it and it's <laughs> pretty good. <laughs> nice and dry up here. <laughs> it's going to become a tradition, I guess. Everywhere you, everywhere you go, I'll leave that. I'll leave that one to you. <laughs> All right. Good on you. So after literally eating dirt, 
digging about a two meter hole and bringing up one of Clara Valley's top winemakers, what I've learned about the soil structures of this wine region and the fact that the minerality one might taste in a Riesling or one of these white wines doesn't technically mean it's the minerality that I literally taste it, but it is in fact affected by many different things in the vineyard. And so Tom was seriously stressing the aspect of these vineyards that he has here. And then we even got to check out the sublayers of the soil and you know the loose and fractured rock that's mixed in with the brown loam on the top and then the limestone of which that fractured rock comes from that third and final layer. And so the roots have to dig through it to find the water and in the end make a better wine. And I do feel safe saying that Riesling must be the great white wine of Australia. And I've heard that there's one other great white here. And I'm not as excited to see this one. And so after checking out the vineyards in Clare, we drove south down the coastline that night, and I had to get in my last supper to at least enjoy some of the local seafood in this area before the next morning we were going to get up and see what kind of great white was roaming the waters around Port Lincoln in South Australia. Quite stoked to be back down here in South Australia. This was one of the things that I've been looking forward to doing for two years, yet it's also one of those things that just gets me a little bit riled up and anxious and get that feeling where I don't know why I do the things I do. Obviously I do them for wine, yet this time we're going to be going down to drink wine with the sharks, great white wine with a great white animal on this earth. No one's ever done this before. I'm stoked to have the opportunity to get down and do it with Tom Berry. We have a few glasses that are rigged up with cling wrap, saran wrap, whatever the world wants to call it, and we'll pour the wine in there. And I've got a backup camel pack to drink the wine. The ultimate wine tasting attire as far as I'm concerned. There has been, it was a sleepless night, got a couple of hours on the boat though. Um, but yeah, we're really uh, not sure what's going to happen. For me, I'm an absolute wuss. I don't, I don't surf, I don't bungee jump, I don't skydive. I'm not sure it's the best thing to be doing four weeks before your wedding, but that's okay. You'll be fine, there's a cage. The wine tasting under underwater in the cage went well with the glass, it went perfectly with the camel pack, so it was a dream come true really. One of one of the a great experiences I've ever had and yeah, definitely do it again. And getting to do the cage diving experience with Adventure Bay Charters was the right choice. Everyone else actually quite often chums the waters in order to get the sharks riled up and active and we the way we went about it with them was that we simply just played music and hung out in areas where they were and get attracted to the noise and they don't bash their faces against the cage so it's much more low impact diving and um, you know respectful to the animals and the environment and everything within it so you know definitely was the right thing to do to go with Adventure Bay and um, take care of the creatures below and they didn't kill us either so it worked out. Seriously. Now, the mood has changed a bit from pristine blue waters to an arid desert here where I've literally got about five flies on my face right now. We're about to head into the Nolabore, an area that was once crossed in the 1840s by Edward John Eyre, a spot that he called a blot on the face of nature, an area that one only comes across in their bad dreams. Now I've got my bare necessities, Billy can, a car to get me across the way, and we're about to take off and cover some ground to get to Margaret River an area that produces some great Cab Sav and Sauvignon Blanc in Western Australia. 